So welcome back to uh, my next video. Uh, before I start, I just want to say thank you for everybody that watched last time and subscribed. It means the world to me. Thank you. Um, I had some footage, but my desk was extremely wobbly. So as you can see, I had to screw it to the wall to keep it nice and steady because wobbly footage is no fun. Uh, just a quick wobble test here and we are good to go. So today, before we jump into the painting, I want to show you a technique. This will help you um, if you want to create beautiful sunsets. It's where you mix two colours um, and they fade into each other and it gives a really lovely gradation effect. And then we're going to move on um, to this silhouette painting and hopefully you can join with me. So let's get set up and I'll explain why I picked this picture in the next clip. On my Pinterest account, um, one of my most viewed and copied pictures um, and the inspiration for this video today was, um, if I just scroll down here, is a silhouette picture I did a while ago of um, a similar scene. It's a palm tree with a gradation in the background with a moon and um, it's got really, it's got loads of attention so I thought it's quite a simple picture and it will be a good subject for today's um, paint along. I'll show you a close up in a second. but. Here it is. So this is the picture I've picked today. It's um, a silhouette, so it's similar to the last painting I've just showed you, um, with the dark palm trees and the lovely gradation in the back. And with a few techniques that I'll show you um, just after this, so we can achieve this together and it will be something you can be proud of and hang up on your wall. So let's get set up and I'll go through the gradation process and then we'll move into the main painting. So here are all my tools. Um, I've set them out and I've taped off a piece of uh, scrap paper that I'll be using for the main painting too. Um, I've got uh, water, big water, clean palette with two whales in it for the gradation and my towel to dry off any excess water like I say the paper that I've taped off just to give me a border um, and I'm using a light orange for reasons that are in the picture and the Persian blue which gives a lovely nighttime sky and uh, some white which I'll add as well So the, let me just show you the, uh, the brushes. This is one of my favourites, Princeton. I'll link this down in the description below. It's just got a lovely, uh, a lovely feel to it. It picks up enough paint. And the other angle brush is a larger one. I think I used this in the last video. It's the De La Rowney. And I use two brushes for gradation. You can use one, but you've got to make sure that you wash it out before you make the second layer. So I like to load up two brushes. So let me clean the paper off and load up the palette with the paint. So today I'm gonna to show you one technique that I use. Um, there are different techniques you can use to get the same effect really, but this is the one I use the most and um, I don't wanna overwhelm you because it's um, if you're just getting into gouache, it can be uh, quite daunting. Uh, you can get to the same result in different ways and that's why I love the medium so much. So. Tip number one, as you can see me here doing, is uh, make sure you've got enough paint on the uh, palette because gouache is um, mixing gouache, uh, the same colour again. It can be really tricky. It can be done with experience, but um, it can be very daunting. So um, I mixed the first colour um, to a creamy consistency. I wet the brush first, as you'll see. Use the larger brush here. Just showing you that the uh, white amount is a lot higher than the actual gouache colour itself because gouache is really pigmented so you don't need much at all. So I'm just washing off the brush and as you can see I haven't washed it out properly from last time so I'm just trying to get that old pigment out. Um, and I want to get the brush so it's just a damp, it's just damp, not too wet. And then I can mix my first gradation colour so a tiny bit of blue because uh, Persian blue is very strong so mix this up to a very creamy consistency a bit like um, you know like cream you know you get in a tub that's what I like to work in most that consistency 
and it gives a, a nice thick coverage and an opaque coverage on the on the paper. So I load my brush up here. And this is why I like angle brushes because you can uh, get a lot of paint on the brush and uh, just trying to get the right colour. Load that brush up and then I move on to the next colour. Like I say, you don't have to do this, but I like to do it because um, I can move straight to the next colour because gouache dries fairly quickly and I don't want to mix, um, mix colours in the purest parts on the top and the bottom of the paper. So um, I use two brushes. You don't have to, but I like to sometimes. Okay, so I'm mixing up the other orange colour here. I want to try and get the colours fairly similar in value, which means uh, the lightness. So it looks more natural. If I make the orange too bright over the blue, it won't look natural. So I'm trying to get the same kind of colour variation here. So that's that colour finished. And now I'm almost ready to start applying the paint to the paper. So before I uh, continue with the uh, commentary, um, I just want to say that all these exercises are super important when you're uh, starting using a new medium. For me, these kind of gradation tests and just mixing and playing about with the paint really, really helped um, improve my skill level. Um, it's so important to practice. It might feel like you're not achieving much but just getting used to the consistency the way the paint flows it's so important when you're painting um, and it will give you a, a better understanding when you lay it on the paper so I just wanted to say that practice is so important okay so you can see that I've laid the um, the top gradation in uh, quite thickly um, I'm just painting it one color right down to the center of the paper and I'll do the same with the other colour. I'm making sure that it's nice and even, nice and opaque, just about halfway down the page. And then I can switch out brushes, because I'm lazy, <laughs> and take the orange colour and go and do exactly the same on the bottom half of the paper up to the middle. I'm making sure that the uh, colour's the same Nice and opaque like the top. Just re-wetting the brush a tiny bit there, not too much, um, just to keep the consistency creamy. And then going back in, right up to the blue, but not touching the blue yet. I just want to draw that line across the middle because that's when the gradation starts in a second. As you can see, I've just started moving into the blue. Damp the brush again. And this is where we can actually start the gradation. So I'm washing out the, uh, the orange color now Damp again, so it's just a damp brush, no paint. I'm just going right through the center line, moving up and down until that center line's blurred and you start to mix the two colors together. And I go back in with the orange. I maybe should have washed the brush there, but I know that I can go back and forth and gouache is really, it's really forgiving. And that's why I love it so much because uh, I'm a kind of painter that will go in make a mark and then go back. And uh, if I need to go back over it again, um, it, it allows me to do that. So yeah, just moving the brush back and forward, up into the blue and then back down into the pink. Now I'm gonna take the, the blue wash, load up the brush again, reapply and move down into the orange and back up. And this is essentially the, how the gradation works. While the paint's still fairly wet, you move up and down through the center line until you get the gradation you want. Uh, I, used to, I always used to panic because I watched lots of videos when I first started using gouache and um, they used to tell me that gouache dries quickly, you need to work quickly. That is true to a certain point but after you get used to using the medium you, you'll feel more comfortable in this and uh, Usually when you re-wet the brush, you can go back in. So I'm coming to the end. Well, not the end, but I'm, I'm getting to a point where I'm fairly happy now. As you can see, that centre line is slowly starting to disappear. And it looks more natural as the two colours blend together. You can keep going until you're happy. You know, some brush marks are actually quite nice sometimes in your pictures. And uh, I like leaving some of them in. Give my brush another wash off. 
move back to the blue I'm going to pull that one down a bit more and like I say you can keep practicing this on multiple bits of paper with different colors and you can really see what works well together especially if you want to paint the sunset it's really effective and you'll see later and you can also see how much paint I'm using so putting that initial amount of colour down is really helpful. So I'm getting to the point now where I'm quite happy. A tiny bit more orange. I've seen a little bit there that I need to change and I think we're nearly there. I think the only next step for me is uh, just checking, yep, just showing you there that the uh, the gradations, I'm happy with it. So before I peel the tape off, I just want to dry it off and then we'll go for a close up and you can see what you can get. I'd love to see your attempts at this. So uh, just tag me on if Instagram or in the comments below. So you tell me how you got on with this. It's um, a nice little exercise and I think it will improve your skill with gouache. And also this tip, like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to include a tip in all my paint alongs at the beginning that you can apply to the main painting. So this is the main aspect of the actual painting we're going to choose, well I've chosen. And you can take this across. Okay, so I'm just peeling off the tape. Lots of people find this satisfying. I do if it doesn't rip the paper. And that's why I use the heat gun, so it heats the, uh, heats the glue up on the, the tape and then it gives it a nice crisp line without ripping the paper. Okay, so I'm nearly finished. I hope that helps. And like I say, you can always pause and go back and uh, practice this again for yourself. Stop the video, and then when you're happy, then you can move on to the main, the main painting, which I'm just about to start now. So here we go. Um, got my top-down view. Sorry about the lighting. It's not perfect. I've got a really strong light from the left-hand side here. I actually did draw in the uh, picture but I don't know why I did that because I cover it up with the paint because it's quite opaque so I'm just showing you that I've got the reference above I've got nice clean water again I've washed my brushes out so I'm ready to go I've got enough paint left in the palette to start my gradation so uh, here we go um, the link below I'll put in so you can download the picture print it off and then you can cut it out yourself and use it as your reference or you can put it on your iPad however you prefer to work so I'm adding more white because I'm going to add the center line so here we go so I'm just brushing in the sky again all one color uh, from the, the pictures darker at the top and I'll adjust for that later just trying to keep that creamy consistency like I said I completely paint over my drawing um, and I picked this picture particularly because it's not that difficult so whatever skill level you are um, drawing wise you can uh, pick this up fairly easily and I would suggest painting the gradation first and then maybe going over in pencil once the, the underlay is dry because a, a drawing does help it's never been my uh, most favourite part of uh, any painting. I prefer just to get painting, but unfortunately it's a necessary thing. So yeah, moving the blue on here. And this is exactly the same as the uh, tip I showed you at the beginning. So I'm just going back over, make this the top of the sky darker. Because when you look at the sky, wherever you are, it's always darker at the top. And it becomes lighter as you move down towards the horizon. up some more pigment and these flat brushes are definitely the one of the most used brushes in my arsenal uh, where gouache is concerned I'd recommend anyone getting them like I say I'll link the uh, the Princeton ones that are really affordable they've got a nice um, they're not too not too hard and uh, not too soft they're like, the, they're like the Goldilocks of brushes and uh, I've used a lot of brushes and these seem to be really nice because gouache is a funny a funny medium it's not as it's right in the middle so you've got oils that are really thick obviously you require a really thick brush and then watercolor that's very thin so you require a very soft brush that holds lots of 
uh, water and pigment but gouache is right in the middle and finding a brush for finding the right brushes for me that lay down the the pigment and the paint without shifting it about have taken me a long time so like I say these Princeton brushes have come really handy so I'm moving on to the bottom now painting over my my drawing just laying in quite a light orange as you can see from the picture the center where the the blue meets the orange is a lot lighter and then towards the horizon near the mountains the orange becomes a lot darker and I realized this after I've put the white in so I've got to adjust because if I was just to leave the orange as one one color or one hue it wouldn't look as realistic as you can see from the picture there's a nice glow along the along the mountain line in the background and that's what draws your eye in so I'm just going to add some more orange to my palette again I'm using Royal Talons gouache today um, but and I'll link that down below. It's quite a cheap brand, so you know you're not going to be spending money on paint if you. Well, you're not going to be spending lots of money if, if if you just want to start out in gouache and you're not sure whether you you want to do it full time or you want to you don't want to spend a lot of money because if you don't enjoy it, then you've got lots of paint that you won't use again. So raw talents is right in the middle. Anyway, so I've added a lot of orange to the top of the mountain range in the back. Now I'm just. Uh, trying to blend that in so same technique again keeping the brush damp moving back to the orange I realized I needed a little bit more so it's another gradation in the gradation if you see what I'm saying so I'm making the orange appear to blend in with the horizon okay moving back up the picture the paper I'm using by the way is um, my paper, the only brand I use. Um, I know lots of people love Arches, um, Strathmore, also. Um, I use uh, a brand called uh, Sanders Waterford, uh, Waterford Sanders, sorry, got that mixed up. It's my favourite, my favourite brand. And if uh, I could give you one tip above all others, it's paper don't um, try and afford the best paper you can when it comes to painting you can get away with using a cheaper gouache um, even brushes you know it doesn't really matter I'm just you know I found my own but it's experimentation but paper you can't in my opinion scrimp on paper so go for the best paper you can afford I would recommend a hundred percent cotton paper it just seems to take the paint lovely and evenly. It doesn't buckle as much. I use really high a high GSM paper. About 400 is the minimum I use. I only do this because I don't like the buckling you get from lower GSM paper. But feel free to experiment on your own. But Waterford Sanders, or Sanders Waterford, I probably got that wrong. I'll link it down below. Is uh, my favourite, always has been, and I'll never use any other paper and I think you'll be the same once you find a brand that you like you'll stick with it but so going back to the center of the painting now I'm putting in a lighter color blue because you can see from the the uh, reference we're using it's a lot lighter so I'm trying to do the gradation between the sky meeting the orange and in the center getting that gradation just right like I said, if this is your first painting and you just paint it along, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, you can always stop, pause and rewind the video and see what I'm doing. And by all means, I'm not perfect on any of my uh, videos. I'm just trying to show you my techniques and hopefully you can take them forward into your paintings uh, in the future. Okay, so I've laid the paint in now and this is where I'm just doing some fine tuning. I'm also sorry, I apologise if I sound a bit nasally, my hay fever's uh, playing up today. So yeah, mixing a bit more white into the orange and going to the top layer of that orange, just laying in a thin line and then going over. Over again, brushing that right in. I need to make the brush a tiny bit wetter, I realise here, just to uh, get rid of these harsh lines I can see. 
as I'm making the gradation. I'm, I'm fairly happy with the paint that's down on the paper. I just need to adjust that centre line so it mixes and looks more realistic as in the picture. You can get away with being a more abstract, but I find that any sunset, I personally just like uh, the gradation effect you can get with gouache. I think I, I don't know if I've said it before, but I used to panic when it came to when it came to using gouache and people telling me how dry it, it, how quickly it dries, and it does dry quickly. But you have got a few minutes to play in between each layer, and like I say, it's rewettable, so you can go back in with a damp brush with pigment or without, and it will reactivate the medium, which is really handy. Okay, I'm moving back and forward, and as you can see, I've taken a good. 10, 15, 20 minutes over this one gradation just because I know it's the main aspect of the painting and I want to get it right so I'm moving back in again with some with some more orange because I realised that the, the mountain the mountain range is higher than I initially painted. And now I've laid down a lot of paint and I would recommend um, it's not necessary and I mean most people have got hair dryers in the house but I use a heat gun. And then I go in once I'm happy with the heat gun, dry that bottom layer. And so I can go over again with the um, with the drawing. So I'm just drying off the back layer. And it also gives you uh, a good opportunity with gouache because the darks dry dark, uh, the darks dry lighter and the lights dry darker, which is something you'll always uh, you'll also get used to when you start using gouache um, and so a, a, a hairdryer will give you that good indication whether you've got the right colours. I'm, I've picked up Payne's Grey here which I'm going to use as the colour for the silhouette of the palm trees. It's one of my favourite colours, it's not black. Um, I might do a separate video on this, there's some other videos out there that are really good on it um, and I, I think I found this colour from listening to somebody else online and Payne's grey is the the grey I uh, the the color I love for silhouettes because it's got a real dark richness to it and I'd recommend it to any artist and because we're not going into too much um, detail and we just want that silhouette shape as you can see I've just washed out the uh, the same angle brush I used for the background uh, I'm just getting the the colour I'm using now to the same creamy consistency and then I'm going to start drawing in the trees. Um, the thing I like about the angle brush is that it's got the sharp flat edge and then the point. So it's a really versatile brush as you can see I'm using the edge of the brush here just to put the tree shape in. Literally just drawing up the trunk of the tree. You don't have to be massively accurate with this. Um, just Go back and forth with the reference and uh, eyeball it and then I'm just gently colouring in each tree. But like I say the angle brushes uh, are so versatile. <coughs> Let me keep the uh, the brush wet. Moving back in just uh, colouring in the trunk here. Just making sure that the tree is roughly where it is in the picture because I like the fact that they were all central. It gives your eye a place to uh, rest in the picture and as you can see up through the centre you've got the uh, the moon. So just drawing in the second one here, same same idea, just using the sharp edge of the brush. You don't have to use an angle brush, you know, I mean you can use rounds, that's fine, or flats. I've just always gravitated towards the, um, the angle brushes because they just um, they just seem right for me. And that's the same with anything. I'd recommend trying out different materials and you'll always find what sits well with you. So just finishing on for the second one. Colouring in the trunk again. It gives it that nice silhouette colour. Like I say, don't be... You don't have to be too perfect and that's why I picked this picture because if this is one of your first paint alongs then you know that's great and uh, you'll get better over time for me drawing never came 
naturally and it's something I've really got to work on. It's not one of my strong points, but um, like I said before, I just like the, uh, the getting the paint on the paper, but you might be the opposite. So one tip I'll give you as well, looking at what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm constantly looking at the reference back and forward, um, just so I've got the placement as good as I can. I'm just drawing in the trunks initially of the trees, um, and then I'll move on to the, uh, the foreground. Being careful not to put my wrist into the wet paint, which I usually find myself doing. Um, the this, I, one thing I forgot to mention is the size of this. I've kept it small. Um, I pref I like painting small. I always have. Um, I find it just gives me more control, especially when I started out and I've just uh, stuck to doing smaller paintings. Uh, this is a six by four. Uh, of course you can go larger if you like um, and that would give your gradation you where you get a lot more practice if you do a larger piece but I've kept this piece smaller because um, this is aimed towards the more of the beginner and sometimes if you paint larger it can feel uh, quite overwhelming if you haven't painted large before so moving on to the next group of palm trees also don't worry about making the trunks too smooth because that edge will make the tree look more realistic if you see what I mean the brush marks so literally I'm just pressing down with the angle brush here and if you get any slight imperfections in the edge it just adds to the realistic look to the painting and plus, uh, I quite like the painterly, the the painterly look. I would class myself as a realist painter, but I'm not a photo realist, so I like to leave brush marks in my paintings, and uh, I like the way it looks. Okay, so I'm just drawing up these next trunks. I've left the. I think there's a light in the center of the picture. There's like a, a street light. I've left that one for last because um, the trees you can get away with leaving kind of skew, but the, the actual street lamp needs to be fairly straight because uh, your eye will recognize that as not being a tree then. It will stand out separate from the tree trunks if you see what I mean. So just mixing a bit more of this Payne's grey colour in, which I can't recommend enough. Just go into the final tree trunk now. Like I say, this I'm putting this paint along on my channel. Um, in the future I'm going to do some more time-lapse videos where I'm painting, but they will be downloadable from my uh, website, so keep an eye out for those and I'll make sure that I link those because I want to help mainly the beginners and people that are just starting out with gouache because for me it was invaluable paint alongs were invaluable and I um I want I leave my mixing palette out my my towel the paper because I want you to see the whole my whole desk and my mixing and what tools I use so it will give you an idea I, I mean they're just tools I use and these are things that I've picked up over time and you'll pick up your own tools and your own you'll have your own favourite things but to start out it can be really handy just to just to see how somebody else paints. Okay so I'm picking up another one of my favourite brands this is a, a Skoda Perla brushes I found these recently they're another nice uh, synthetic bristle brush that holds the paint nicely and gives a nice sharp point so I'm moving on to the sign at the edge of the uh, painting here. I like um, anything that's uh, man-made in a picture that's next to an organic it just gives it that more that realism for me your eye picks up on the the tree and then the straight edges of the 
of the sign. Whenever I'm painting urban landscapes, I love the um, the man-made aspect against the uh, organic or natural. Okay, so I'm mixing some white in here. I think I'm moving on to the the background now, the uh, mountain range in the background. I sh thinking about it and looking at this picture, I should have painted these in first, but I didn't. So, um, and this is the other beauty of gouache. It, you know, if you if you make a mistake, then you can go back and paint over it and correct, and it allows you to do that. And it's one of the reasons, again, that I love it. So I'm just getting the background colour of the mountains mixed up here. Whenever you get a background and a foreground, the background will always be lighter. It's something called atmospheric perspective. And um, I might talk about this later, but as you move further into the distance, colours will tone down and the atmospheric perspective comes in um, and so painting a lighter colour for the mountains makes them appear further away and as painters all we're trying to do is create the illusion of 3D space on a 2D surface and so by painting these mountains in the background a lighter colour your eye automatically thinks that that is further back in the picture so I've changed my background. I've I decided to put the mountains coming in from the left and the right to give like a V shape in the background. It draws your eye in. You don't have to do this. You can follow the the reference exactly as it is, which is fine. But I also like to change a reference up and it's one of the, you know, the perks of being a painter. You get to choose what you leave in and what you don't. In a picture and I just thought that by adding this mountain range which is really simple it's just um, like I say I've just brought it in from the left it's just a copy from the right it just brought my eye in and I just preferred that as the look of the painting but like I say you don't have to do this so I'm painting this left hand mount mountain range in the background as if it's closer than the right one so I'm making it a tiny bit darker and then when I eventually move on to the right hand mountain range that overlaps further back that's obviously lighter and you'll see that in my mixing process just add in some tiny dots to the top of the uh, the range here and filling in between the the trunks you don't have to be too neat because like I say you can go back over with the darker color again and touch up the trunks which is what I do so just bringing that mountain range down using the same colour as well again, just adding some white with the Payne's grey. I've added a tiny bit of orange as well because um, you will get the light from the sun bouncing off of that distant mountain range and it just adds a bit more realism. So I'm incorporating colours that I've already got on my palette just to give that the picture the cohesiveness it needs just adding a bit more orange I think I'm mixing up the mountain range color to the right and if you look closely at the uh, the reference um, the picture I printed off wasn't brilliant but on the screen okay so cutting myself off there this is another tip as well I use um, off cuts of any of the paper I use I keep them because gouache dries differently when it's dry to when it's wet. So to get the different colour in the background, I've just used a piece of um, off cut and I've mixed my colour and then put it onto the paper so I can see if it dries the right colour. This is a big tip because uh, you can save time once you've mixed a colour by putting it down and it'll give you the exact colour that the gouache dries. So I'm obviously happy with the colour, so I'm now painting in that right hand mountain and some of the foreground elements will come in later, I'm just avoiding those. Like I say, I've made my, my job harder here by painting in between the, the trunks. I should have painted in the background um, element first, which is what I usually do in most of my paintings. I work back to forward. So in other words, I paint sky, 
then I paint the furthest object and I work back and I work forward in my landscape. So in this uh, this picture, I painted this. I, I should have painted the sky first, then the mountain ranges, then the foreground. But um, I think nerves got the better of me for some reason. Obviously, this is one of the first times of my painting on film, so I just uh, overlooked this element again. I'm putting down another colour because I realised the mountain range wasn't dark enough, uh, wasn't light enough, sorry, because I wanted to make it feel closer, sorry, further away in the picture. So I wanted to lighten the colour so the overlap was noticeable in the picture, if you know what I mean. So just painting the skyline there, bringing the colour down to the foreground. If you've got any questions and I haven't gone over everything um, because that's more than likely, uh, please hit me up in the comments below. Um, I'm really, really happy to talk about any of my process. If I've missed something, if you're unsure about anything, uh, please feel free to put something in the comments below because like I say, I'm bound to miss something. The Payne's Grey, the, um, the brand is M. Graham, by the way. Um, one of my favourite brands. You can't really get it in the UK much. I think there's only one dealer that sells it. But I'll also link that in the description below. Okay, so I think I'm happy with the background colour now. I'm just going over and filling in the gaps. making sure that that gouache is uh, keeping its creamy consistency all the while while I'm painting. Okay, okay, yep, yeah, just finishing off here. colouring in between. Like I say, you don't have to be too neat on this because you can go back over afterwards. So I think once I'd finished this section, I realised that I needed to go over the high point of the mountains with a slightly orange mix because like I say, the, the sun in the, the background would hit the top of these mountains and illuminate them slightly, which is more realistic. As you can see, I'm just shifting the colour forward and backwards, and this is what you'll you'll do a lot um, when you paint, just to get the right the right colour. I still wasn't happy with that overlap colour, so I've gone back over again. And this is something that's absolutely fine. There's no rush. Um, when I first started painting, I always used to put this invisible time stamp on my paintings, but I've realised that the longer I give myself the better the picture, to be honest. And that's just my style. I like um, other painters that paint quickly. Um, Nathan Fox being one of them. He's um, well renowned for his quick sketches. He's very talented at putting down paint quickly. That's just not me. I like to take elements of his style, but I prefer to take my time over a painting and make sure I'm happy um, at the end of it so there's no time constraint don't you know push yourself to be quicker or slower than you are you'll find a natural rhythm and that's what I found over time okay so I'm adding in that just that skyline just a tiny bit of orange added into the mixture add in some little dots and dabs on the top of the the range just to make it look more realistic like the distant trees and hills and other things you'll find in a landscape. So I'm just finishing off. Okay, I'm obviously happy with that element now. I've left the um, strip on the left. Just so you can see. And as a reminder to uh, maybe do it yourself. Okay, so as I as you can see, I'm going back to the original colour now. 
I'm going to finish putting in the foreground and finishing off the palm trees. I'm just retouching up the trunks of the trees here. Well, I've obviously touched them with the background colour. Like I said, if I was to do this again, I would have clearly painted the background in first, but it doesn't matter. And like I say, gouache is such a forgiving medium. Um, that's why it's uh, so popular with me. If you found this, um, oh, what I wanted to say as well, if you find this um, helpful, then let me know um, if you'd like more of these these kind of videos. Um, like I say, I'm going to put a couple up every now and again, and I will make some more full length paint alongs because I, f I find they're really helpful. And uh, in the future, I'll put them on my website for download. I'll also be painting different things, not just landscapes as a painter. I like to move about. I'm not pigeonholed. I tried painting one subject and some people like painting one subject, i.e. characters, uh, landscapes, um, you know, urban, forest. That's just not me. I've tried it and I prefer moving about. So I kind of paint most things. The only thing I don't really paint are portraits. I used to, I used to paint a lot of portraits with markers when I first started to uh, Art, but I've moved away from that now because I found that I gravitate towards landscapes, nature and some character design but not much. I picked this landscape today like I said in the uh, beginning of the video because once you've mastered the, grada uh, the gradation effect um, you can paint multiple silhouettes and if you go onto the website Unsplash which I'll link below there are multiple you know, pictures like this that you can download and practice for yourself. And uh, they make great pictures that you can hang and they don't take too much effort. And that's exactly why I chose it today because they're quite effective. But once you've got the uh, technique down, they're not that bad. OK, so moving on, I'm just washing my brush out here, adjusting the foreground. Getting some of that orangey grey and moving the mountain range down, I think, because the orange colour is just poking through. I want to cover that up, bring the grey mountains down through the railings. Also, let me know if you like my uh, my style, if there's anything else I can add, if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about during my paint throughs. Like I say, this is all new to me and uh, I'm literally filming and commentating what I see, so if there's anything I'm missing, just let me know. Okay, so I'm happy with the, uh, the mountains and now I can slowly finish off this foreground. I'm just adding the rail I can see along the back. This is the man-made element again of the picture. I think this is, uh, I think the picture was from Venice Beach in California. It looks absolutely beautiful. And it gives that sense of calm, I think, just uh, that twilight. Okay, so adding some detail of the railings, not going, not going crazy. Just that suggestion. Sometimes the suggestion's all you need, and then filling in the bottom here. I quickly realised that um, I was adding too much detail, and I moved away from that section because in these smaller paintings, you don't need to add a massive amount of detail. Just the suggestion or the hint of an object, and your eye will fill in the rest of the detail. 
So here's the sign. I think I swap brushes um, just after this because the brush I'm using is very small. I think there's a bench off to the right here, just filling that in. Okay, yeah, this is when I switch to my larger brush because you can cover more of an area. And it doesn't allow me to add as many details as sometimes I want to, which is a good thing. Especially, like I say, in a, in a painting this size. I personally don't think you need massive amount of detail. So I'm just going to block in the very foreground here. Just making sure that I get an even coverage. Switching to the pointed end to get some detail on the uh, the trunk of that tree, bringing it down past the the railings. Not much left of the foreground to fill in now. Like I say, don't be you I mean you can you can stick to being rigid to the picture, but I like to change elements like I said before in any reference. So if there's an element of the picture you want to change, by all means please do it. Like I say, if you feel like you can improve the composition or you know, there's an element you want to take out, leave it out. You know, some sometimes, you know, a photographer will put something in and it just doesn't make sense in the picture. So, yeah, leave it out. And I, like I say, I'll move elements of this picture around. You don't have to be a slave to the picture by any means. And it's actually quite nice and liberating to leave out and move bits of the picture in. And as artists, that's the uh, one of the main draws for me. Okay, so I think the next part for me, yeah, um, I just dry off of this. I dry this foreground because I don't want to smudge it with my hand. And the next part are the tops of the palm trees and the lamp, the street lamp halfway through. I think the heat gun is actually one of my most used tools. I saw someone use it and um, it's changed gouache painting for me quite a bit. Just from the background or if you've got a section of your painting you want to move on with and you don't want to have to wait for the paint to dry. It's perfect for that. Like I say, you can move, remove tape without any ripping of your paper, which some artists don't mind, but I like a nice crisp unripped edge on my finished painting so when I frame them or sell any of my work if the, whoever frames it has got the chance to uh, use the whole picture okay I'm gibbering okay so now I'm adding the lamp post I'm being really careful here to make this nice and straight because uh, Street lamps are very straight. If you make it wonky, unfortunately, it loses that. By all means, use a ruler. If the surrounding paint's dry, 
uh, but try and get this one as straight as you can. That's the only advice I get because if you want something to look like something like a street lamp, you need it to be straighter than obviously the tree trunks around it. Okay, now I'm moving on to the palm trees. So I'm moving my eye back and forward from the trees. I'm at this stage, I'm just literally putting in a rough shape. So at the moment, I'm just putting shapes down because towards the end of the picture, I'll show you a, a trick that I use with palm trees and foliage that pokes out into the, the outer edges. Oh, that was lucky. That's another thing. Dropping brushes halfway through a painting. <laughs> I've done that before and it's not fun, especially with a dark color like that, but I got away with it this time. Okay, moving back, mixing up some more and uh, going back to the angle flat again because I realized that the small brush was causing me to make too many details. So I've moved to the, the flat brush again, loaded it up with some more pigment and I'm just putting in the shapes now of the the palm trees. This for me was one of the, the most fun elements of the whole painting because uh, you can be quite expressive here and you don't have to be too neat. You just want the basic shapes at this stage. And palm trees are quite fun to paint. So just moving from one tree to the next, I go from left to right because I have a habit of putting my hand into the paint sometimes so I always move because I'm right-handed I move left to right across the page and that lowers the chance of me smudging or ruining the painting by putting my hand in it anyway like I say moving my eye back and forward from the reference to my picture not being too rigid with it you know just getting the basic structure in Your technique might vary. You might be happier using a smaller brush. You might be happier using a larger brush. It's uh, practice and whatever comes naturally to you or whatever gets you the desired effect. But in this case, I just wanted to uh, get that silhouette shape in as quick as I can with as large a brush as I can. I think Part way through this, I found that the um, the underpainting was picking up a slight bit because I was probably spending too much time on each part of the tree, and this was picking up the paint underneath. This isn't a problem, and don't let it bother you, because once the layer has dried, you can always go back over it again, and I think that's what I do in the end. I go back over certain elements that have picked up paint from the underneath and that's not a problem. And another reason why gouache is so forgiving. And if any of you have used watercolour before you know that to keep any highlights you have to be very clever in how you use watercolour and leave the page white. And I've used what colour before, but it just wasn't my my medium. Um, I like using it for washes because it doesn't lift. So sometimes I'll use it in a background because if I go over it, it won't lift up again. But I didn't find it as forgiving as gouache and uh, as opaque either. And I like the look that gouache gives me. Okay, so moving on to the second clump of trees as you can see I'm very liberal on the left I'll come in and finish it off towards the end of the uh, the painting just dab 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 there's no real skill to this it's just I'm just putting dots and dabs and moving my eye back and forward from the page to the reference and back and just making sure that I'm happy you know take your time with this if you're new to it you know and you just want to get a picture that you're happy with 
take your time. And you can even, um, another recommendation, you know, uh, once you've painted the trunks in, would be to get a pencil, maybe a soft lead pencil, uh, once the underpainting's dry, and draw in, you know, the tops of the trees if you want to be a bit more specific with them, that's no problem. And then you can colour in those shapes with your with your gouache. You can paint over them to give you a better shape. I don't like doing that because it gives me more of a fluidity when I'm just painting freehand like this. But if you're uncomfortable and you want to you want to get it right first time, then yeah, by all means, draw in the top element. And that goes for any ele any element of this picture. If you want to draw in before you even start and you just want to colour in your drawing that's absolutely fine too. It might be a good idea to even do two of these paintings, one where you draw the outline of the trees and the, the, the foreground with a pencil and then colour that and then another one where you just freehand it and then see which one you like and what style you like. You might come across a style that you prefer It's all about experimentation, and uh, that's what I'll suggest to you today. Once this paint is finished, go away and experiment. If you want to try gouache, get a cheap set. I'll put a link down below. Uh, get some half decent paper. Like I say, 100% cotton is my recommendation. If you don't skimp on anything, it's paper. That's my highest, highest recommendation. You can get away with using cheap brushes and paint, but paper, it just you will not you might you know it, it's the one thing that if you start painting it could put you off painting so get decent paper okay moving on now i've finished blocking in the rough shapes of the palm trees i've got one of my roughish brushes here my sorry i can't speak one of my roughest brushes it's got a real bristly messed up end i've just dipped the brush in the paint's fairly dry and then I move from the shape out and I just flick ever so slightly. And it gives this dry brush effect of leaves, especially on palm trees that just give it that palm tree effect without having to paint every single spiky leaf by hand, which would take hours. Um, and it gives it more of a natural feel if you do it this way as well. So save any old brushes you've got because they can always come in handy. Like I say, just going into the shape and flicking out, just very slightly flicking out, not, you know, halfway up the page, just outside the shape. And if you go back and forth with the reference with your eye, you'll see where you need to do this. You might not want to do this and you might want to paint every leaf, but I think this just gives a nice, uh, more organic feel to the uh, edges of the trees. And this is also one of the fun parts for me. And um, this is uh, something I would use in uh, any of my foliage, to be honest. If I'm trying to give that grass effect in a foreground or in a field, I'll load up, I'll make sure the brush is fairly dry. And then I'll just use uh, some paint straight out of the tube. Make sure you load the brush up and then you can get this lovely dry brush grass effect that looks quite natural and I've used it a lot in a lot of my paintings okay so this element's fairly quick once you get used to it and like I say just a tiny flick out and this uh, finishes the effect of the trees off nicely and then we can move on to painting the moon in the sky and a, a secret tip when it comes to painting stars which is also one of my favorites okay so I'm just finishing off just moving back from the picture looking at it as a whole and I'd recommend this as well when you're painting just step back from it sometimes when you're doing finer detail 
and uh, it stops you fiddling too much and uh, you can see if it's actually adding anything to the picture or taking away from it. Sometimes I can get really caught up in the detail and I move back and I realise the painting didn't need it. Okay. Um, I think here, like I said earlier, um, I think I'm, there's a there's a pole I've missed in the foreground, and then I think I go back over some of the central areas of the the palm trees that have picked up some of the under under painting. I think there's a the silhouette of like a a bin in the foreground here, just finishing off some of the, the little elements that I feel like I've missed. And you can jump around like this. Um, It doesn't really matter. I'm just giving it these final little tiny touches. You don't have to add them. And I think this is where I noticed that the, the trees need a couple more little branches poking out here and there. But it's personal preference. Okay, now I fill in the trees again because I can see some of that background kind of coming through and now they're dry I can go over them fairly quickly and it covers it up to give it the effect I want which is the black against the gradation of the sky because any light behind an object and you're facing it you'll see this out in nature if um, you've got a light a spotlight behind something it gives it a silhouette effect and uh, no light gets through at this time of day. Okay. Nearly there. I think this is where I pick up my plastic circle tool. Yeah. I'm not very good at drawing circles and to get the desired effect of the moon because it's one of the main focal points of the picture your eyes drawn to it and it's right in the center i wanted to get the moon fairly circular and uh, this is how i did it so i just laid out found the circle i wanted drew in pencil the the semicircle of the moon and then when i go in with the white i pick a tiny brush here one of my smallest brushes. I can just trace around the moon with the white gouache and uh, I know that I'm going to get the right shape because like I say it's one of the main focal points of the picture and this is something to bear in mind whatever picture you draw or paint. So yeah like I say a tiny brush like a model brush not many bristles but I load that up and then I've got to go in close and just give this a bit of time when you're painting it because uh, you want to make this one you want to make this look realistic just wetting the thinning the paint down a tiny bit And if you want to do this on a test piece of paper before you go straight in on your painting, feel free to do that as well. So I'm fiddling around here, uh, just getting the shape I want you'll feel it when it gets to a natural point and so I think I'm happy there. Okay I add one star just to the right as in the reference and then here comes the fun bit. So if you ever have any toothbrushes that are old or um, you're just about to throw away keep them because this will come in really handy. Um, I, I, I use a plain bit of paper I put it over the area I don't want covered and then to create the illusion of stars I just dab the toothbrush in the water wet down the paint quite thinly the white turn the brush over and then just flick 
just give it a couple flicks, not too many, and then cover up the areas you don't want any of the white on. And this can give a really nice random starry sky effect. And there we go, I think I'm nearly done. So, I am. Just remove the tape and I think we're done. So, I'm really, really, um, if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you and well done. Don't forget to leave a like and a sub if you want to see more. Like I say, I've, I've got like uh, lots of ideas going forward and I hope that you've picked up some element of this that you can take forward into your painting. Uh, just peel off the paint here. Lots of people like this this part and I've got better considering my last bit. And uh, please tag me and come and show me if you've copied along. I'd love to see your pictures. My name is Dom and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.